Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chamath from Sri Lanka, representing the primary palliative care special interest group of the Asia Pacific Hospice Palliative Care Network. So, initially, to give you an outline of my presentation, I will give you an overview of the Asia region in terms of unmet need for palliative care and how primary palliative care could step in and potentially address this gap. Moving on to three success stories from within the region and then facilitators for palliative care delivery within uh, the Asian primary care settings and a little word about our young special interest group. So first of all, to give you an overview of the Asian region. So Asia is home to 4.6 billion people, which is nearly 60% of the global population. So we constitute of 11 countries from the Southeast Asian region and 27 countries from the Western Pacific. So a little bit about the need for palliative care in the Asia Pacific region. So in 2016, 26 million of the global deaths were associated with serious health related suffering and it is extrapolated that by 2060 this figure is going to rise as much as 48 million and by the time 83 percent of all deaths will occur in lower and middle income countries with the largest proportional rise uh, occurring in low income countries which accounts for 155% increase and the most rapid increase among the people will be among those aged 70 years and older which is expected to be about 187% increase so the world's elderly population is on the rise and similarly um, there will be a substantial increase in the proportion of older people among the Asians, with uh, the Eastern Asians contributing for the most part, with 34% um, uh, of the Eastern Asians will be over 65 by the uh, year of 2060, and same, uh, you know, similar but not as steep increases to be uh, expected in Southern and Western Asians. Then um, looking at how palliative care is integrated or developed within different regions the world has been mapped. So um, many countries fall into the category of 3A, level 3A, where um, there is only isolated provision of uh, palliative care services. But we do have um, countries within the region such as South Korea, Japan, um, Australia, who have advanced level of uh, integration of palliative care into existing health systems and it's been found out that the level of palliative care development uh, correlates with the gdp per capita income um, human development index and uh, universal health coverage so this map shows the gdp per capita income which closely follows the previous map same with the Human Development Index. And then finally, universal health coverage. As you would note on the map, there is a stark discrepancy in between how different countries have achieved their universal health coverage goals. So this may be why, uh, as a new discipline, primary palliative care should be implemented in this region to ensure that everybody who needs palliative care will have timely access to it. So here we have some other important data. So this map represents the estimated number of patients receiving palliative care per 1 million population. So a more darker shades represent better um, access to palliative care. And here we have how many service providers or services uh, are available per 1 million population to receive palliative care. And then the morphine equivalent total opioid use in the Asian region. Then moving on to three successful examples. 
from within the region. I've chosen um, Nepal, India, and Indonesia, um, two lower middle income countries and one upper middle income countries, but all three belong to category 3A in terms of uh, palliative care development, where they all uh, have sorts of isolated provision of palliative care. So first of all, talking about Nepal, how they developed a model of, for capacity building in primary palliative care in an evidence-based manner. So very importantly, in 2017, the Nepali government came up with the National Palliative Care Strategy. Aligning with that, this project aimed to enable primary care workers in rural village health posts and district hospitals to deliver palliative care as part of their integrated chronic disease management. So the project was primarily implemented by the International Nepal Fellowship uh, in association with Green Pastures Hospital and UK Aid Matched Funding Grant. The other collaborations were uh, several NGOs, Nepalese Association for Palliative Care and the Global Health Academy of University of Edinburgh. So they had lessons to learn from. Initially, between 2015 to 18, they did a comprehensive assessment of needs with research, and they also had experience uh, on as they worked towards translating the palliative care toolkit and the SPICT tool into Nepali language. And also, they had have had previous experience of training mid-level workers to deliver palliative care. So they worked to build on the existing Nepali rural primary care system that constitute of um, regional hospitals and village health posts. So alongside the intervention, there was ongoing assessment and research on the caring practices as well as the health seeking uh, behaviors in the community. They trained female community health volunteers to identify and support patients. And the pharmacists employed ensured that essential medicines, symptomatic medications, were available um, in abundant supply. And they also focused on raising public awareness about these interventions, and especially about the concept of compassionate communities. And they also raised awareness in a school environment. So the model was basically a family and patient centric model with uh, the existing rural uh, primary care system of Nepal, the female community health volunteers and the um, compassionate communities all uh, in coordination provided care for the patients and the families. So to ensure the sustainability of the project, there's ongoing uh, distance learning uh, opportunities for healthcare providers. And on a positive note, uh, even in the remotest parts of Nepal, they have good access to um, internet. And also there, is, um, there are interventions based on research findings, community involvement, and ongoing evaluation. So six monthly, the task force meets with um, palliative care experts and the government and aim for their uh, evidence-based uh, program to roll out over the coming years. Then we move on to Indonesia about the Surabaya City Task Force of Integrated Palliative Care that was established in 2008. So they identified the need uh, of home palliative care for incurable cancer patients who were referred from the referral hospital. This was aimed at relieving cancer patients of all forms of suffering. Main stakeholders involved were the main public referral hospital and other surrounding hospitals in Surabaya, several primary health care centers, the Palliative Foundation of Surabaya and the city government. So this primary palliative care model uh, aimed at delivering palliative care to cancer patients in the community through a primary care led model while also organizing training for the volunteers involved. And the impacts 
of the program were that there was improved quality of life, not only among patients, but also the caregivers and improved accessibility to palliative care and opioid medications and improved continuity of care because there was a coordination between healthcare institutions. Um, they also faced some challenges. There was less interest among uh, the public in engaging in social work and poor interest also among the primary care practitioners to be involved in palliative care, limited availability of opioids and uh, challenging um, how, how challenging it was to maintain coordination between primary and secondary care levels and lack of uh, proper evaluation to scale up the program. However, the program has measures in place to make sure it's sustainable. So uh, they've uh, brought the integrated model of palliative care under the National Universal Health Coverage Scheme, which was an important move. And there is incorporation of palliative care into the undergraduate curricula of medicine and nursing programs. And uh, there is ongoing efforts to expand the network of stakeholders to fund the social support they receive. And finally, we move on to India. Um, how India developed a primary palliative care competency framework for primary care community and family physicians. So they identified a deficit which was a discrepancy uh, in the demand for palliative care and the distribution of specialist palliative care services. On a positive note, the Indian National Health Policy in 2017 recommended developing continuing education programs to empower physicians engaged with primary care provision. So two principal stakeholders came together, the Academy of Family Physicians of India and the Indian Association of Palliative Care. So they worked towards a common aim to equip primary care, family and community physicians with knowledge and skills to cater the needs of the communities and home-based settings that they serve. So in achieving this goal, they um, followed important steps. So they convened a task force for incorporating primary palliative care into primary care practice. This constituted 15 members of national and international faculties of palliative care, family medicine and public health. They together brainstormed on a competency framework required to empower these physicians in delivering a palliative care within primary care settings. So the main competency domains they uh, concentrated on were knowledge, skills and attitudes, ethical and legal aspects and communication and teamwork, which they published in a joint position statement in 2018. So they incorporated these aspects into the Diplomate of National Board curriculum for family medicine. So they launched the program with predominantly a distance education mode for all these physicians for it to be more accessible. So they delivered the initial batch of graduates recently, even among the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Recommendations were made to enhance practical exposure to palliative care to make better emphasis on it. The outcomes of this program are still awaiting formal evaluation. On the long run, um, these generalist physicians are supposed to collaborate and network with the specialists to provide integrated form of palliative care within the communities. And the colleagues from the special interest group were of help in identifying the facilitators of palliative care delivery within primary care settings in Asia. Many countries have integrated primary care uh, within their national policies on palliative care provision. So most of them are yet to implement or yet to evaluate the um, outcomes of implementation. The sporadic provision of palliative care is available in many primary uh, care settings across the countries, which may form models, uh, if you like, exa exemplars for the other settings to develop on. And some of the countries have well-resourced 
pre-existing uh, very structured uh, primary healthcare systems which may form a medium for palliative care to be delivered effectively. There is growing interest among health professionals and policymakers and consequently an improving political commitment towards primary palliative care. So emphasis is placed on including palliative care as a component of national insurance schemes across countries that may entitle citizens free of charge access uh, to these facilities. It has also been instrumental that many of these countries networked with regional and international organizations which help them in capacity building and policy reforms and so on. Um, there is a huge scope for uh, family and community engagement in uh, palliative care provision and there is a rising use of tools among uh, health professionals to identify palliative care needs at the primary care level and the policies are such that there are more liberal regulations on the safe use of opioids there are increasing educational opportunities for healthcare professionals to learn palliative care at both undergraduate and postgraduate levels and there is growing advocacy for um, developing modes of advanced care planning and finally there's increasing momentum on research and hence our uh, knowledge base on primary palliative care is growing so um, a little word about our special interest group um, we are homed under the asia pacific hospice palliative care network uh, which has 18 principal sectors and members from over 31 countries so um, our formation was inspired by our European, African and American counterparts and we initially convened in Indonesia in December 2022, so we are quite a new special interest group. So um, led by Dr. Tegu from Indonesia, uh, we are carrying out a formal survey to identify the strengths and weaknesses uh, within the region in terms of primary palliative care. Thank you and please get in touch with us. I hope we could work collaboratively in fruitful projects moving forward.